Hey everyone, in this AP Chem Series video, we're going to take a close up look at a type of solid known as a molecular solid. First, remember from the last video that there's many different types of solids like molecular solids, ionic solids, metallic and covalent network solids. In this video, we'll take a close up look at the structure and properties of one of these types called molecular solids. So let's start off with a general description. Molecular solids are composed of just that molecules. So each of the positions in my lattice is going to be occupied by an entire molecule. Those molecules are going to be held together then by intermolecular forces. If the molecules are polar, those intermolecular forces will be dipole-dipoles or hydrogen bonds. If the molecules are nonpolar, then they'll only be experiencing London dispersion forces. Let's take a look at a couple real examples, starting off with solid water. In the solid structure of water shown here on the right, you can see the individual H2O molecules making up each particle position in the lattice. Let's highlight one separate molecule here in blue, and then a second separate molecule up here. Since these water molecules are polar and both containing oxygen to hydrogen covalent bonds, that means the intermolecular force holding them together in the solid state would be hydrogen bonds. So that's one example with solid H2O. Let's take a look at a different one, this time with solid methane CH4. So in this model of solid CH4, the intermolecular attractions aren't labeled as clearly, but you can still imagine that one of these CH4 molecules is attracted to the molecule that is adjacent to it. In this case, however, since the CH4 molecules are nonpolar, that attractive force is instead a London dispersion force. This description of molecular solids makes up some of the key ideas. Make sure to take a moment, write that down. So we'll close the video by taking a look at some of the properties that are unique to molecular solids, starting off with melting point. To melt a solid, and in particular for a molecular solid to melt, the intermolecular forces between the molecules must be broken. You can imagine looking at the solid structure here and then the liquid structure over here. To change it from solid to liquid, it should be pretty apparent that you have to allow those particles to start to move. And if they're going to move, that means the intermolecular forces holding them together have to be broken and rearranged. If I bring back my model for solid water, that means the hydrogen bonds in between the individual water molecules will start breaking as those water molecules start moving around in the liquid state. Since intermolecular forces are generally quite weak, at least in comparison to other attractive forces like covalent, ionic, and metallic bonds, that means it's easier to break them. And in terms of heat, it means that less heat energy is needed to break them. For this reason, molecular solids have low melting points. It's also worth mentioning here that this melting process is a physical change. So the covalent bonding within the individual molecules is not changed. If it were, we would be converting H2O molecules to a completely different substance, and that's just not what happens when something melts. This description of melting is another key idea for the video. Make sure to take some time and write it down. Another property we can take a look at is called electrical conductivity. For electrical conductivity, a substance must have two things. First, charged particles, and those charged particles have to have the ability to move and flow. So the question becomes, do molecular solids have these mobilized charged particles? We'll take a look at this by examining the solid structure for CO2, otherwise known as dry ice. You may have seen dry ice before around Halloween time, where if you drop some in a container of water, it produces this cool, foggy vapor effect. So let's start with the molecules themselves. CO2, or any molecule for that fact, by definition is neutral. That means it does not have a charge. Now there are electrons in these molecules that do have a charge, but because they're molecules made of nonmetals, those electrons are very tightly held, which means they can't move around. For this reason, molecular solids are not typically electrically conductive. This is our final key idea for the video. I will mention, however, that there are some other solid properties like hardness and brittleness, but these vary too widely for molecular solids, so they're not covered in AP Chemistry. And that wraps up this video on molecular solids. Thanks a lot for watching, and here is a brief summary.